Welcome to Autos and today we are learning about histogram in Photoshop. Make sure you watch this tutorial first on levels adjustment layer before you dive into this video. We have a grayscale image here which has two tonal shades. If I bring up the levels adjustment, we can take a look at the histogram. And we know that the histogram represents dark to light tones like that. So quite naturally, the darker tone is represented by this bar on the left and the lighter tone is represented by this bar on the right. Easy enough, right? Fine, then let's look at this image. This image also has got two tonal shades. The only difference is, this time, the image is colored. So on the basis of the previous example, the histogram for this image must also contain two bars, right? Let's bring up the histogram and have a look. But instead of two bars, we have got four. And I'm gonna explain why. We have got our old grayscale image again and this time we are going to take the help of an additional histogram. On the panels bar, we click on histogram. It is similar to the histogram in the levels adjustment but with some additional features. I'll also quickly open the channels panel for reference. If you don't know about channels, please watch this video first. I'll link it in the description. This image is formed by the combination of three lights, red, green and blue. The red light glows like this, the left side dimmer, the right side brighter and it's properly depicted here in the red histogram. The dimmer red light is this bar and the brighter red light is this bar. Then we have the green light. This too is equally dimmer on the left side and equally brighter on the right side and that's why it's identically represented in the green histogram. The blue light too is identically dark like the red light and the green light on the left and equally bright like the red light and the green light on the right. And that's why all these bars properly line up in these three histograms. Furthermore, if we combine these three histograms, red, green and blue, we get this exact placement for these two bars in the RGB histogram. So basically they all line up in a grayscale image. And that is why it is easier to read the tones of a grayscale image in the RGB histogram. Now let's have a look at the colored image. We clearly have got two types of tones in this image, but when I bring up the RGB histogram, we see that it has got four spikes instead of two. And that is because the RGB histogram has combined these three histograms and visually represented them as a composite. So now let's inspect what type of lights are producing this image. The red light is not shining 100% bright, but it is still on the brighter side. On the other hand, the green light is not totally dark, but is still lit dimly on the darker side. The blue channel however shines two types of lights, one a little dimmer and darker and the other a little brighter. And we can see here in the histogram that the dark blue light is even darker than the green light, which is why the blue light is more towards the left. Also, the bright blue light is brighter than the red light here. And that's why this blue bar is more towards the right than this red bar. If we visually combine the red, green and blue histograms, we get the RGB histogram. And that is why we are getting four bars. Now we also have different modes other than RGB. You might want to see the RGB composite in exact colors. For that, we go here. So we have the colors mode. And there you go. There's a small difference though between the RGB and the colors mode which we will learn in the next example. You might also want to see the individual red, green or blue channels again. I'll click on green. So it is now exactly same as this one. The last mode that we are going to check out is luminosity. And you can see that finally this is the histogram mode that shows the readings of the actual tonal values of the image. The luminosity histogram shows two tonal values. Both of them are very close which means there's not much of a difference between the tonal values. And the luminosity histogram also says that both the tonal values are situated in the mid grayish range. One tonal value is darker since it's on the left and the other one is brighter since it's on the right. We can verify the tonal values of this colored image by going to grayscale. To do that, we go to image, mode, and then grayscale. 
And there you go. In the grayscale mode, instead of the luminosity histogram, we have the gray histogram. So this dark tone is this bar on the left and the lighter tone is this bar on the right. The two bars are also situated near the middle of the histogram, which means both the tones are made grayish. And that is what we have here. The next thing that I want to discuss is that the order of the pixels doesn't matter to the histogram. In this example, the order of the tonal values of the image is same as that of the histogram. We know that the left bar of the histogram denotes the darker tone and just by coincidence, the darker tone is present on the left side of the image. We know that the right side of the histogram represents the lighter tones. So this bar on the right indicates the lighter tonal value of the image. And just by coincidence, the lighter pixels of the image are on the right. But what happens if the pixels are arranged like this? There is no change in the histogram, right? This left bar still represents the darker tone of the image. And this bar on the right represents the lighter tone of the image. Next, I'll explain the difference between RGB mode and the colors mode in the histogram. This image is produced by the red, green and blue lights like so. And now let's explore the corresponding histograms one by one. In the blue histogram, we can see that there are two types of blue lights. The left bar is the darker blue and the right bar is the brighter blue. Furthermore, in the blue channel, we can see that the dark blue light covers more pixels and the bright blue light covers less pixels. Now, how is that represented in this blue histogram? The method is a bit weird, but here it goes. The blue histogram considers the biggest area covered by any blue light to be 100%. We can see that the dark blue light covers more area. So, this region is 100%, right? In the histogram, this percentage is measured on the y-axis. The bottom is 0 and the top is 100. And we can see that the darker blue light is indeed 100% here. Now if this area is considered to be 100%, on calculation we'll find that this area is around 25%. And naturally, the height of this blue bar also shows the same percentage. Now let's look at the green histogram. We can see that there's only one type of green light and this green light is rather dark since it's more towards the left side of the histogram. But this green light is less darker than this blue light and that's why it's more towards the right than the blue light. Now how do we decide the pixel percentage for this green light? We have already learned from this blue channel that the light that covers the most amount of pixels will be considered as 100. But here in the case of the green channel, there's only one light. And quite naturally, this is the light that covers the most amount of pixels. So this should be 100% right and it is in the green histogram. Next, we have the red light which is rather bright and that's why it's towards the right side of the histogram. In the red channel as well, this red is the only light, right? So naturally, this red light covers the most area. And in the red histogram as well, it has got the height of 100%. That's fine, but how do we calculate the percentage in the RGB composite? Here we will have to take all these three channels into account. Which light covers the most area or the most number of pixels? This red light as well as this green light, right? So let's have them as 100% here. Now if these areas are 100%, Photoshop then calculates the percentage of the area covered by this dark blue light. And it seems like it's around 80%. Again, if this area of light is 100%, what is the percentage of the area covered by this bright blue light? And Photoshop says it is around 20%. So this is the reason some of the heights of the RGB composite look different from that of each of these individual histograms. But let's say you want to see the heights of the three channels exactly as they are over here. For that, you can use the colors mode. Not only does it show the exact heights, but it also shows the exact colors of the individual channels. Let's also check the luminosity histogram for this image. And we know that the luminosity of the grayscale image looks like this. And that is what is shown here. This dark tone is represented by this bar. And this lighter tone is this bar. 
you can see that the luminosity histogram not only shows the tones but also the percentage of the pixels of the tones. So the tone covering the largest area is considered to be 100%. So this dark tone over here is 100 and so this narrow lighter strip of pixels is around 25%. Back to our original image. In this example, I'll show you another reason why we should reference the luminosity histogram. If you have watched my video on levels adjustment, you would know that this slider controls and represents the white pixels of the image. We have RGB selected as the histogram mode here. And if you take a closer look into the histogram, we'll see that there's a huge spike over the white slider, which means there's a huge amount of white content in the image. But if you check the image, there's no white. Now what is happening here? To understand that, I'll bring in the additional histogram panel. And for the moment, we just try to understand why we have this spike over here. If we check the red histogram, there's nothing in here. If we check the blue histogram, there's nothing here as well. It is only in the green histogram that we find a huge spike in this region. And the RGB histogram just shows this green spike. If there had been some amount of pure red over here and pure blue over here along with this pure green, there could be a chance for this to be pure white. So you can see how the RGB histogram can be so misleading. Herein, we introduce the luminosity histogram. So naturally, it shows three luminosities with different heights. The tallest height is this one since it covers the largest area. The shortest height is this one since it covers the smallest area. And this mid-height tone is this region which covers a little more area. And we already know that the tonal gradient in the histogram is like so. Therefore, this is the darkest tone of the three. This bar is somewhere in the mid-tones. And this block is the brightest of the three. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to go to levels and then gradually move this white slider to the left. Keep an eye here as I do so. You can see how these three bars are moving, right? All three of them are in a race to become bright. You might be thinking this bar will reach the finish line first. Well, let's see if that happens. So I'll keep moving this slider. You can see how this small bar is taking over. And likewise, this bar is gradually becoming whiter. I'll keep moving. The small bar has reached the finish line, so I'll stop here. So out of these three bars, only this bar has touched the finish line of the histogram, right? And what does this finish line on the right side of the histogram signify? Pure white, right? And that is what it is. Only this bar has become pure white. To prove that, I'll bring in the info tab. And then I'll hover the cursor on the image. We can see that this block is not pure white because all the three RGBs are not 255. But if I hover over this bar, we can see that each one of RGB has got 255. And if you inspect these three channels over here, you can understand why this strip has become white. In the levels, we had RGB mode selected which affects all these three channels at the same time. We can see that moving this white slider has turned this region to pure red in the red channel, the same region to pure green in the green channel and pure blue in the blue channel. And if you have watched my tutorial on channels, you would know that the combination of pure red, pure green and pure blue produces pure white. With this principle, we can also manipulate the levels in a different way to turn this bar complete white. So let's just try that. Instead of RGB, we are going to manipulate the individual channels one by one. So first, I'm going to select the red channel. And this red histogram is same as this one. So we just have to make this region in the red channel 100% red, right? And we already know that this narrow bar is represented by the smallest spike. So all we need to do is grab this 100% brightness slider and move it here. You keep an eye on these three places as I do so. 
This region now is 100% red, meaning the value of R here is 255. Also, you can see here that the small spike has touched the 100% brightness finish line. So this is the advantage of having this histogram in addition to levels. As we moved the brightness slider on this bar, this red histogram rearranged itself to show the final position of the pixels. So quite naturally, this red bar is touching the 100% brightness finish line in the red histogram. Next, I'm going to go to the green channel. Again, this histogram is exactly same as this one. We know that this region must be 100% green. The corresponding bar for that in the histogram is this one. So we just need to bring this 100% brightness light over here. You keep an eye for the changes in these regions. I'll stop when the screen spike reaches the right edge of the histogram. And you can see that this region is now pure green. Last, we'll go to the blue channel. So this histogram and this one are now identical. We know that this region should be 100% blue. The spike for this region is this one. So we just need to move the bright slider over here. And as always, keep an eye on these places. This small blue spike is almost reaching the edge, so I'll stop here. So this is now 100% blue. The combination of 100% red, 100% green and 100% blue has produced this white. In this luminosity histogram as well, the small bar is touching the right edge. So I'll quickly hover the cursor. This is not white as expected, so I'll keep moving and there you go. Now do you see the difference between using RGB and the individual channels to make this white? So this was with RGB and this with each individual channels. So you can use any of the two methods based on the look you're going after. And this is all I have for today. Make sure to check the other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye.